Oh, right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a build refresh for Mesa. Before we even get started with this video, I need to make something very, very clear. It is nearly 100% likely that you do not have everything for this build because it uses everything we can put on Mesa. And also, you do not need all of the things that I'm going to show off in this video. Pretty much any combination of the different factors that are happening on this build will result in an extremely powerful build that can do Steel Path no problem. And when you combine all of them, being honest, you get something very stupid uh, that uh, is exceedingly, exceedingly strong. So just a warning, you probably don't have everything here, and it is exceedingly expensive to put together. For that... Let us begin talking about all the stuff on this build, starting with the build itself. So, this is a complete changeover from what I've put on Mesa in the past, in that we have removed our Helminth armor strip, which has usually been so good. Uh, we previously used this build with Pillage. Now the build looks like this. The reason for that, us switching to Nourish on the one instead of Pillage, uh, is because we can add two green shards to bring Corrosive back to the old meta whenever Corrosive used to fully strip armor. Adding two regular green shards with a new effect to increase the max stacks of Corrosion by two means that Corrosive fully strips whenever you reach those 14 stacks. That allows us to build very, very differently. In that, we are now full in and able to use Nourish for our energy economy on just extremely high power strength, extremely high duration, uh, and huge stats coming off of Nourish with the 190% viral that affects our Peacemakers. And of course, the extremely higher strength for Peacemaker itself, the higher damage bonus on Shooting Gallery, uh, and the higher duration that not only makes up for some of the efficiency loss on Peacemaker, uh, but also makes it much comfier to keep our, well now, 1, 2, and 3 up for long periods of time, with each one lasting over a minute in duration. In addition to that, uh, we are exceedingly tough with Adaptation still being included in the build alongside Umbral Vitality. We have over a thousand base health um, and anything and anything really like below level probably 2000 or so is really not going to be much threat to us uh, unless it's like an Eximus ability or something along those lines like an explosion. Uh, because that will ignore Shatter Shield's additional 95% damage reduction, but the 95% damage reduction plus the 90% damage reduction plus Shield Gating plus over 1,000 health really makes it pretty much impossible to stop us in any normal content uh, outside of things that do ignore Shatter Shield, which will pose a slight threat to you. In addition, uh, we have a ton of energy capacity with 541 energy for coming from pl Prime Flow, uh, and filling that back up, is Energy Nexus alongside usually Xenoric, though you do not need to use Xenoric for this build. Uh, it is extremely good for filling back up, which we'll show momentarily. Energy Nexus, of course, being a brand new mod, this just straight up gives us three energy per second regen. And normally, because Mesa is a channeling Warframe with Peacemaker, this will turn off. However, I actually think that Energy Nexus is so good with specifically Nourish, because it is multiplied by Nourish, that it is worth using here over something like even Fleeting Expertise. Because not only, of course, do we lose the duration on Fleeting Expertise, but also um, this will refill so quickly and is so convenient, uh, especially for whenever you just kind of get unlucky with energy drops, that I really think it is uh, extremely good here, filling us up just right at the beginning of the mission and... Um, letting us top off no matter what we're doing by turning Peacemaker off for seconds at a time. We are also, because of our new energy economy with Nourish, Nourish using Blind Rage. It is very notable here that Transient Fortitude, this is of course a loss in strength and a loss in duration, and of course our efficiency goes back up. This build can still do anything when combined with the other factors that we're going to talk about on this build, um, and you do not need to go Blind Rage, but the point I'm going to illustrate here is that you can, and it's not hard. Narrow Minded, of course, giving us a ton of duration. Umbral Intensify with Umbral Vitality, a good chunk of strength here. Um, and, of course, we're using Mace's Waltz so that we can move around, uh, which we do have things to add on to that. The weird thing you're probably looking at in this build is Combat Discipline, because this is a rank 3 aura. So this is you lose 6 health on kill, squad mates gain 14 health on kill. Now, 
a possible interaction that's going to be changed here is that you lose six health counts as you being damaged, which activates Arcane Avenger. This is on damage, 21% chance for 45% critical chance for 12 seconds. We're going to talk more about this in a second and how it relates to Peacemakers, uh, but the important thing here is that this damage is reduced by Shatter Shield. So the 95% damage reduction on six health gets rounded down to zero damage, but it still counts for Arcane Avenger. Notably, if that gets fixed, you can invest another Umbral Forma and just use a rank one, um, or well, rank nothing combat discipline actually, uh, and then that'll only do one damage to you, which with our very high health, we can easily sustain. Uh, no problem with just the health drops from XMI or like using a little tiny bit of outside healing. So if this changes to not round down to zero, or the damage reduction doesn't work, there's still ways that we can use this interaction. Uh, but for now, you can use up to, uh, I think rank four also works, but I decided just to chill at rank three uh, because everything fits. Uh, if that changes though, there's that. If you don't like this interaction or if you do not have Avenger, a lot of your generic, uh, just good stuff auras are going to still be solid here. Cross projection, even though we can strip armor, is of course still very good and will help your teammates. Uh, and also you will kill things a little bit faster up front, of course. Brief Respite is great for shield gating. Uh, energy Siphon could be added on here to just like, you know, bump through your passive energy regen even more, which is still good. Growing Power is not terrible, but I would say it's just objectively worse than Corrosive Projection in this build. Um, and then of course, you know, there's all the different little ones you could do, Loop Detector, so on and so forth, Holster Amp, some people like. A uh, few things here and there, if you want to change the ore out, there's a lot to do. Obviously, Avenger is very hard to get, though available right now in the event uh, quite easily. Uh, swapping this out, Molt Augmented is the play, uh, especially like if they change this in a way that makes Combat Discipline like not super sustainable for whatever reason, or if they make it so Combat Discipline does not proc Avenger, I would probably swap this to Molt Augmented, which not only benefits Nourish, but also, of course, all of our other abilities for increasing our damage uh, even more. But for right now, Avenger is what I like. And we are also using Arcane Velocity. Uh, this is basically the Mesa Arcane, which is on critical hit, 90% chance for 120% fire rate for two pistols for nine seconds. Pretty unbeatable. She has unlimited ammo on her four, and this affects it. So it is like one of the best stat increases that you can get on Mesa. Uh, it is extremely, extremely powerful. On regulators, because we are utilizing the green charts, of course the build had to change. Now, this probably looks a little odd because obviously... We could instead be using Primed Heated Charge to jump up 100% additional elemental damage. So the reason we don't do that is because we want our balance of Corrosive to be higher than Heat. We want some Heat procs, but getting more Corrosive procs because we have up to the cap is actually much more worth it now. So I like this balance personally for like the status amount to Corrosive ratio. You could also try out the full Toxin mod here for a little bit more, of course, elemental damage but you'll have a bit lower status. Um, all combinations really honestly still work very well. If you want to put Prime Heated Charge in instead of Scorch, it's not like this isn't going to work suddenly or something like that, uh, but this is the balance that I have decided on that I think feels really good. Also worth noting, you don't have to run Galvanized Shot here. Uh, you could just run Hornet Strike. Uh, that's It's worse. It just is worse, and the status is, of course, better than usual now, uh, but the increase in damage you get for the multiple statuses and such is very powerful here, uh, and I really would not suggest changing anything on this except for maybe the balance of the elementals. In addition, we have a lot of other stuff that affects the regulators. So you're going to notice that I'm using the Ceramic Dagger. Ceramic Dagger, of course, is for stat sticking normally and is going to get combo just from getting kills with primary weapons. Notably, right now, regulators build that up. Um, they, they give you this combo. And we also have the 20 initial combo from our Evolution 3. And then this one actually doesn't matter at all, but choose whatever you like. The big thing here is that you get the combo. And the combo continually comes back by itself without you ever having to use your melee weapon. This combines with our secondary. So our secondary is the Medusa. This is the Mesa build for it. Worth noting... This does not have to be the weapon you use. The reason I like this weapon, it is a kit gun, by the way. This is a kit gun with Gaze Splat Haymaker. Um, the reason I like this is because it has infinite ammo. It recharges itself because it's a battery weapon due to packs charge. And it is extremely good at immediately eliminating nullifier shields. 
and it is still even using the synergies we're using and like turning into amalgam barrel diffusion and using secondary outbursts uh, it is still extremely powerful and does amazing damage even down tuning the build because this is one of the best secondaries in the game now secondary outburst is the reason why we're here and the reason why we're using the ceramic dagger on swapping to your secondary weapon, consume all combo multipliers to increase secondary weapon critical chance and critical damage by 20% per combo consumed for 30 seconds. So, what that means is that on our Ceramic Dagger, because we are using the Mesa build for it, with Covert Lethality increasing initial combo, Corrupt Charge increasing initial combo, uh, and of course its passives increasing its combo as you build it up, what that means for us is that we are going to get uh, 9 times 20% whenever we are fully built up, which of course is 180% crit stats, both of them, because this is critical chance and damage. You will note that if we look at our regulators, 180% is 70% more than primed target cracker gives, uh, and it is also about the same that we get from prime pistol gambit. So it is effectively adding more than two more primed mods to our regulators in pretty much the most valuable stats we could possibly be getting. This skyrockets your damage to stupid heights uh, and is extremely, extremely worthwhile to use uh, for Mesa. In addition to that, uh, right now we have Helios equipped. It is worth noting this works with a large variety of companions, but what they provide like it doesn't really matter you could go any way with this as long as you're doing one particular synergy which is having the Volklock equipped with a crit chance mod to bump it over uh the limit needed or tenacious bond so this is headshot kills reduced companion recovery time by three seconds that part doesn't really matter if the companion's critical chance is over 50 percent then you gain 1.2 final critical damage multiplier this is an additional crit damage increase, which is an extremely powerful effect for us that works on regulators. That is, of course, extremely good and going to increase our damage. Not actually super significantly, but by a good amount. It is not it, it, it is it is not a bonus worth dropping if you can help it. Uh, but if you, for whatever reason, given our energy economy, wanted to use something uh, like a Sahasa or Death Cube uh, to make the energy economy better, you could go for that as well. Uh, although, notably for the Sahasa, the Sahasa can provide energy and also still use Tenacious, uh, as long as your primary can support the Hunter mod uh, that allows for that build. So, with all these things together, we are also extremely fast and capable of keeping up with Warframes such as Wukong using their movement abilities because I have added two Parkour Velocity Tau Shards to this build. You could add a third and drop the single regular duration shard that I'm using to go probably too fast, uh, but the two Tau I personally like. For this, because those shards affect rolling in our four, we are extremely fast. We are just able to just cruise around the map at extreme speed uh, and just, you know, swing through hallways, kill everyone in them, and just roll to the next hallway, and just without even needing to go in and out of our four, just blitz through everything. Uh, it is just obscene. You can see that our efficiency also is not too bad. We are draining, you know, pretty fast with our negative efficiency and such, uh, but it is not undoable, uh, and especially if you're killing enemies while you're rolling around like this, the energy orbs that you're going to be getting with the multiplied energy gain off of Nourish are going to sustain you quite well. So as long as there are enemies to kill, usually you pretty much never have to drop out of your four other than recasting Nourish and your three and your two, which of course is about once a minute. With that, um, we're going to show some situations for this build, starting with our usual Corrupted Heavy Gunners. So the Corrupted Heavy Gunners, of course, uh, these guys run about 23 million EHP apiece because they are going to be level 200 with the Steel Path Multiplier. Just to show consistent damage across the three tests I'm going to show here, I am going to turn their AI off, just so you can see just the raw damage this build can output. Uh, and we're just going to turn everything on. Swap to our Medusa. This is, of course, without stacking up any of our buffs that happen over a period of time. Uh, and you can see that these enemies... 
turn into regular path enemies once we are slightly focused in on our four. They don't last very long. Because of that, we are now going to do imaginary things that don't exist. So we are going to up the test to something that literally can't spawn in. So these are Exo Gokstat officers. They only spawn in Railjack, which has no Steel Path variant. They are boss enemies. They are basically super heavy gunners. Uh, these enemies, all together, the 20 of them, have 1.3 billion EHP altogether. So take that into account. They are still affected by status and all of the things that this build will normally use, though. Uh, we will wait for a second for... Uh, well, I guess we don't have to wait. Our two should still be more than fine. And we don't need our three for this test, obviously. Yeah, so these, these enemies are, like, basically fake and don't exist, and they have outrageous, outrageous levels of EHP. And you can see this also is uh, nothing to this build. That was 1.3 billion EHP worth of enemies. Now... Does this build still do extremely high damage to enemies that are immune to status, you might be asking? Well, luckily for that, we have an enemy that is immune to status and is one of the toughest things you can shoot at in the entire game that we can spawn in. These are Demolisher Juggernauts. These are the uh, disruption enemies that can show up. They are armored, despite what this says. They do have armor. And they are not only completely immune to viral damage, which is the buff that we're getting from Nourish, they also cannot be status procced outside of shooting their boils, which will not spawn in while their AI is off. So this is completely statusless, just raw what the DPS of this is doing to these enemies. Of note, I don't know exactly how much EHP these guys have. I know they have at least 50 million apiece. And because, of course, they're completely immune to status here, uh, that is a gigantic reduction in the amount of damage that we're actually capable of doing with the heat procs and the corrosive reductions and all of that stuff. Uh, so this is the raw damage of this build. Sorry for the annoying beeping, of course. It also is going to be kind of hard to see because they pulse that red sometimes. But yeah, this is... Oh, no, they do spawn the boils now. They did not use to spawn the boils while their EHP was off. I'll try and put it at an angle where I'm not shooting those as much. Regardless, those are Steel Path Demolishers. Disruption Demolishers that are generally considered to be basically the toughest thing that you can fight regularly in the game, I would say. So, yeah. This build, this build does some damage. It does some damage. And outside of shooting at enemies that literally don't exist, such as the Juggernaut Behemoth, for example which this enemy is basically immune to everything and uh, will round damage down uh, significantly. Outside of shooting at this enemy that literally doesn't exist and only spawns in one mission that can't be played on Steel Path. Uh, well, no, technically it can be played on Steel Path, but there's never a reason to. Uh, outside of this enemy, which this is actually one of the best things for fighting, uh, and also this enemy, if you were actually fighting it, would uh, show its weak point and die. Uh, outside of an enemy like this, this build can handle pretty much anything also worth noting that there's not really anything that can handle shooting at this it just kind of doesn't exist uh, outside of like doing like a bajillion stacks of banshee's sonar because that enemy that's fake doesn't uh actually is, is not actually immune to banshee's ability but yeah that's that's the kind of damage levels that we're looking at here and that is all without using Matterite. that is including xenric and just so we can see the uh the uh, damage or the uh, energy rate here. If you are curious how much energy we can get per second with Energy Nexus plus Xenric, it looks like that. You'll note that we are regenerating energy faster than we would be using it during our four. So we're at about like 300 energy, hit our four, drain us back down, go down to 200, pop this open, fix back in, back to 300. And, and counting, of course. Like, I mean, by the time I said back to 300, we were actually at about 350. Uh, so, yeah. The energy generation on this is outrageous whenever you add Xenric to it. Uh, it takes seconds to jump back up to 540. 
uh, which of course allows you a ton of time to be in your peacemakers and just clean shop on whatever you need to shoot at. We are, of course, going to do the Steel Path run. Uh, it is worth noting, I need to be clear, it is Steel Path. It's not going to look like it. And in terms of Acolytes spawning in, they, they, they will spawn in, though their health bars will turn off and they will evaporate into the ether. Uh, yeah, so it's gonna be it's gonna be a whole time. It is it is going to the the enemies in the Steel Path mission that we are about to do because they are not even close to level two hundred because that's just not where Steel Path starts. Um, they are going to look like level fifteen enemies on Earth on regular path. So yeah, that's uh that's what's going on with Mesa. Uh, let's uh let's jump into that. All right. In we go. Get all of our energy topped off while we're hacking this. Turn on my three and my two, of course, and let us charge up real fast. The energy generation is just absurd. We'll switch to Medusa. Uh, worth noting for using Outburst, you just want to sit on your secondary weapon. Oh, also, uh, I just realized I did not actually explain how Avenger works in the builds video or in the builds portion of this video. Just to explain right here quickly at the beginning, um, Avenger adds final crit. Uh, so what that means is it takes whatever your calculated crit chance is and then slaps the 45% from it onto the end, which means that because our regulators are at 71% crit rate, whenever we proc Avenger on ourselves and then, of course, upkeep it constantly... Uh, we are actually jumped up to 115% or so. So we are never not regularly critting on this build. Which is, of course, pretty outrageous. Yeah, and these enemies, you know, they mostly don't exist. They will still shoot at me. Throw our two back on. But yeah, it's pretty... It's pretty outrageous. The damage levels that we get to this. Is he just rolling, rolling, just rolling up here. We just gained 800 energy from these enemies. Sorry, 1100 energy from these enemies. So, so energy economy is just, just really not a problem at all. And just the the damage we're outputting is honestly just pretty stupid. to turn our other buff back on. Uh, we also, like, normally are always double critting whenever we have built up our ceramic dagger. Throw our three back on, of course, for survivability. Getting a lot of our health back just from killing Eximus. It's actually worth noting that our survivability actually gets better as the... Um, mission goes longer because more Eximus will spawn and because Eximus died pretty much at the exact same rate as regular guys, uh, at least for like the first couple thousand levels. Um, they're actually just like kind of health bags for us that will just heal us. So it's actually nice whenever they spawn in. They of course can be dangerous because like their abilities can hurt us. Um, mostly the explosions on the ground and such of course like that. Normally, you can just roll into those to make those not a threat, but that, of course, ends at a certain level. See, there, there is a certain level where being careful does matter. Uh, I will say, if you are planning to take this build uh, um, to, like, much, much higher levels, like going into, like, you know, 4,000, 5,000, so on and so forth, I would generally suggest that you do swap to Brief for Sprite, uh, as then you can just, like, swap in and out of your four, uh, or, like, you know, cast your other abilities in order to refresh your shield gate, which is going to be important for surviving. You could also swap out Adaptation for Rolling Guard, which I think is going to be a, a, a lot better for going to those levels as well. Uh, so there's just a lot of options on this build. Let's 
your energy generation there just going stupid. Pick up, pick up our full energy pool by rolling forward into, like, one of the hallways we've been murdering everyone in. It is also worth noting that, like, Nourish is not just for us. We have very low range, um, of course, but you can still uh, plop, plop Nourish onto one of your allies quite easily. Here we have the Acolyte about to show up. Throw our three back on before they spawn it. Oh, it's, the, it's Torment. It's Enemy Mesa. I'm sure this is going to go great for them. Oh, especially when they turn themselves invincible. There they are. But you can see the, the the acolytes don't like it. They're not they're not huge fans of uh what is occurring here. Unless they use one of their abilities that makes them invulnerable, they just die. And that goes that goes on for a very long time. They they kind of essentially don't exist. Yeah, this build is just just dumb uh, and you can see if we want to look at how much combo we have with that 9x combo as i mentioned uh you could theoretically by the way choose to use the new uh ready steel aura if you wanted to bump that up one more tier i believe so that'll give you another 20 percent uh crit damage and crit chance coming from a secondary outburst because uh, i believe it only increases it to one tier up to 10 so that is that is also an option that you could go for in the aura slot. That is that is definitely an arguable one, especially if Avenger um, changes to not proc off of combat discipline. That's definitely one you could go to, potentially. If you're using kind of the full combination here. Grab our energy back to full. Also a bunch of life support. Because, of course, the, en the enemies aren't, like, getting to be near us. Slash procs are a thing that can be dangerous here, of course, as usual. Yeah, that is that is maybe the the one major downside for this build is that we no longer have status purging and of course the like big shield gain that we could get before with pillage. Which will sometimes make the build less comfy, but most of the time the damage that we're outputting is just, like, so high it will kind of cease to matter. Although, if you decided to go the Transient Fortitude version of this build, you should still be able to support that energy economy pretty easily. Uh, because you'll be without the negative... Uh, the negative efficiency, and you could probably use Pillage that way uh, and still be totally fine. Uh, in that case, you theoretically could use Strength Shards to bump yourself up to the point to get to 100% Pillage as well. And then just like, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a different, like a totally different build at that point. Uh, but there are different investments you could make to get to that where you can still get those shields and still get that status purging from Pillage. In general, I think that this, like, is much better. But... For comfiness, it'll, you know, wager from person to person. And also in certain pieces of content, a status purge is, like, very effective. So that's also a consideration as well. Throw our three back on. Yeah, we're at about eight minutes here. What's our what's our kill rate looking like? We're at fourteen hundred almost, which is outrageous. That is uh, above Saren levels of murder, and we have line of sight restrictions. It doesn't. It does not really actually get better than that, if I'm honest. There are limitations for what your kill rate can even be. Uh, you're you're limited by spawn rate at a certain point. Let's 
theme is or he doesn't like it. Yeah, it's just... Um, I mean, it, it, it is what it is. It is just obscene levels of damage output. Do need to re-up R3. Yeah, once we're at 10 minutes, we'll see what our kind of like final KPM is. But the, the real fact of the point, though, is that our KPM is stupid, and our damage output is stupid, and it's it's hard to even know what the, the real limitations of the damage output here are, uh, as the enemies, to find out, don't really exist. Like, in, in any normal content, it's just not really... Like, you, you will run out of the ability to, like, really use this build before you uh, hit whatever its damage threshold actually is. Because at a certain point, you'll be two-tapped by any enemy, because there'll be, you know, level 6,000, 7,000, so on and so forth. Because there there is a threshold where your... Uh, yeah, that's, that's 1,700 KPM. Or if we're getting to 10 minutes there, which is outrageous. Whoops. This way to get to the exit. Uh, you can also see in terms of like our speed, like just the ability to roll here is like going extremely fast. You can be caught up on things and like certain terrain doesn't like benefit from, but in most tiles, uh, it's quite good. Elevator's broken. That bug's back. All right, fair enough. But yeah, it's uh, it's real dumb. Do you, do you need to switch to this build? No. Can you? Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely, you can. Does this work? Even even without the green shards on. Yep. Yeah, Pretty much all things, yeah, you can, it'll definitely work. Uh, but you'll run into a couple barriers at, like, you know, level 2000 or so. Uh, but not any super large barriers that you can't pretty easily overcome, if I'm honest. Uh, just by shooting things a little more. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what's going on with New Mesa. New Saren soon as well. All right, Whispers in the Walls has arrived, which means many new guides are on the horizon. Uh, and thank you very much to all of my patrons for the support, especially $10 patrons, Alex Parnum, Angel SBM, Arbiter Daydream, Vanuven, Automatic, Brandon Coggin, Brutus Salazar, Kena Lathra, Dylan Dorsky, Athrain, Mafon, James Harsthorn, JC4 Science, John Lobdell, Joshua Adams, Lord Acorn, Luzanth, uh, Mikkelkel, Minty Ginja, Mitchta, Nerve, Remoxidate, Sharp, Camerolic Wastelander, The Coupon of Death, Tomeworm, Victor Palmer, Waifu Wars, and Wildad 1. Uh, and also, of course, thank you very much to all of my $5 patrons as well. It is much appreciated. Uh, lots of new guides coming with Wizards in the Walls, and also, uh, they changed new player progression again, so I need to redo the CPR that did just release, uh, but that shouldn't take too much time, and we should have an updated new player guide uh, for the entire chunk that's already out very, very soon. Uh, they did improve it, though, so good stuff. <laughs>